Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're over your time. Would you like to take a minute for a bottle? Um, yes, I would. Um, you know, in, in terms of the uh, Wolf versus Drinkman case, um, um, again, we're, we're making a general challenge. We're not, you know, we, we sued the Chief Justice because we're not making a de facto collective appeal. We're making a general challenge to the vexatious litigant statute. Again, we don't believe it's narr narrowly ta tailored because um, all the parents who, who are declared vexatious um, then have to go through the hurdle or the bar of filling out these forms. And as experience has shown, all of us, once you're declared vexatious, you're essentially denied any access to the court, irrespective of, of um, an ongoing custody dispute. A civil case is very different. Custody cases and visitation matters can go on for years and years and years. It's not that these parents are being vexatious. It's not that they're harassing people. To say that a parent who wants to restore visitation or custody is harassing by filing frivolous litigation just seems to be vindictive and it seems to fail to distinguish between a civil litigant and a parent in a custody case, half of whom were not even the ones who initiated the dissolution proceeding, half of whom were drawn into court. Um, and under the statute, it says... Well, but but they, they had to have done quite a bit on their own uh, to have gotten on the list. Right. And under the... So it's not like you know, they, were, they were constantly being sued and here I am showing up. Because... Right. But I'm just saying in a custody dispute, if a parent is represented, they are protected from the vexatious litigant statute. Those repeated filings for visitation aren't counted as vexatious because they're represented. On the other hand, an unrepresented parent who has neither the knowledge or the ability files these and then the represented parent can say, hey, all these repeated efforts to restore visitation and those are counted as vexatious. While they're not counted against... How many strikes do you need to get, to get on the list? How many strikes? How many cases? What, what does it take to get on the list? Well, five litigations within a seven-year period. The, the problem is in a, in a civil Excuse suit... Excuse me, does that mean, forgive me, but did five litigations, does that mean five motions to modify within a seven-year period, or what's... Well, you know, that's a good question. Under Section 371D, um, um, after you've been declared vexatious, then any motion you file is considered litigation. Okay, but I'm, I, my question is, and I think Judge Kaczynski was asking, what's it take to get on the list? In well, practice, in section, really well, take? repeated, uh, um, they use the word repeated motions, which is the way I think most parents are involved in that because they they request um, you know changes in visitation or changes in in, in um, custody. What about child support? What about repeated motions for child support? Does that count? Those would be counted as 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 um, vexatious, alimony charges vexatious. What happens is eventually in a in a parent dispute with custody, which goes on for two or three years. Even the represented parent who will lose two or three or four would be considered vexatious. But that parent, because they're represented, is shielded from a vexatious litigant motion by the fact of representation. The unrepresented parent who filed just as many could be declared vexatious. So there's an equal protection aspect to this as well. Privileges and immunity. Represented parent is immune from being declared vexatious, a represented parent is also has the privilege of bringing a vexatious litigant motion against the unrepresented parent. So the unrepresented parent who can afford an attorney, um, Justice Zelon, who is chair of the um, Elkins Task Force, a big case that came down, um, she noted in her Elkin Task Force recommendations that money should be made available so a parent won't be a target, an unrepresented parent won't be a target 
of a vexatious litigant motion. Unfortunately, there aren't funds, and in the statute that she provided, there were limited funds for that. So that's, that's what's at issue here. In the sense you don't have the money to hire an attorney, this case functions as a pre-filing case. It, inviol it, it, it entails the Bodie factors, fundamental interest in custody, and the state mo monopolization of... of Thank you. Thank you. The case is argued. We'll stand submitted.